Facts First presents What Flight Attendants Notice About You in 3 Seconds Most people believe that flight attendants have very glamorous jobs. While traveling around the country or around the world can be fun, it's still work. Flight attendants have to go through rigorous training before they're ready to work on a flight. They also need to learn to deal with difficult and horrible people. And there are plenty of things that you don't know about flight attendants. Here are a few things that go on behind the scenes that you probably don't know about. Hands Behind the Back You ever boarded a plane and noticed that the flight attendants have their hands behind their backs? Well, they do this for a reason. It's their job to keep count on everyone boarding the plane, and if people saw them counting with their fingers, the respect level would drop significantly. They have secret sleeping quarters. Long flights can be brutal and most passengers take a nap, but what about the flight crew? You ever looked around the plane and noticed your favorite flight attendant has not been around for a while? If so, they might be taking a nap in the flight attendant's sleeping quarters. Big planes like the Boeing 777 or the 787 have small cabins for the crew to take a nap. They're usually located above or below the galley, so you won't even know they're there. The Mile High Club Ever since air travel became a regular thing, the Mile High Club has been glamorized. When you think about it, it's really not as much fun as you might think. Those bathrooms are tiny, and there's barely enough room for one person, let alone two. Also, the bathrooms often smell. If you're thinking about joining the Mile High Club, you might want to think twice about it. Flight attendants are trained to watch the restrooms to make sure that two people don't enter at once. If you get caught, you can be arrested for indecent exposure and banned from flying on any airline. It's not worth it. Keep your shoes on Many people like to take off their shoes during a flight. If you're going to be moving around the cabin, you need to put those shoes back on. The floors of a plane are not clean, and while spills are cleaned up quickly, there aren't many cleaning supplies on board, and that'll make your feet filthy if you leave your shoes off. They often date each other. Since flight attendants spend a lot of time together in a small space, relationships blossom. Fraternization between flight attendants is accepted by most airlines as long as it doesn't interfere with their jobs, and they must remain professional at all times, of course. They use their cell phones. Flight attendants have a perk that passengers don't. They get to take advantage of the plane's free Wi-Fi, and they spend a lot of time on their phones. When they're telling you to put your phone or mobile device away, they're taking theirs out when they are out of sight. As if getting to fly around the world for free wasn't enough, they also get to use their phones. They have the power to restrain you. If you start acting up on a plane, there won't always be an air marshal on board to put you back in line. Because of this, flight attendants are trained to take down a violent passenger and restrain them. They also have zip ties available, and they're trained to use the seatbelt extensions as restraints. Just because nobody on board looks threatening, every flight attendant could take you down. Signs and Signals Flight attendants have certain signs and signals they use to communicate with one another. They use these subtle signs to avoid freaking out the passengers. You ever heard the beeps at the beginning or end of the flight? These beeps are to let the flight attendants know that the most dangerous part of the flight is over. They also have hand signals to communicate from one of the cabins to the other. Fraternizing with passengers is allowed. There are many professions where fraternizing with others is frowned upon. For example, a doctor can't date their patients, or a teacher can't date their students. There are no rules, though, against flight attendants fraternizing with passengers. So if you think your flight attendant is hot, go ahead, make your move. They are used to this happening, though, so you're probably going to strike out, but you never know. If they tell you that they would love to but fraternizing is against their policy, well, now you can call them out on that for lying. They size you up while you board the plane. When you first board the plane, you may have noticed that there's a flight attendant standing right there. Okay, yeah, sure, they are there to welcome you to the flight, but they're also sizing you up. This is what flight attendants notice about you in three seconds. They make mental notes of who could be intoxicated or problematic. They check to see who's traveling alone, who might need some extra assistance. They look for disabilities and people traveling with children. Finally, they look for people who are strong and can be useful in an emergency. 
they don't get paid well. Most people don't know this, flight attendants don't really get paid all that well. Before the plane takes off, the flight attendants have to do safety checks, greet the passengers, help them get comfortable before the flight takes off. What you might not know is that they're not getting paid for any of that time. Their full pay doesn't kick in until the plane's engine starts and the plane pulls away from the gate. If that plane ain't moving, they ain't getting paid. They only get paid about a buck fifty per hour for the work they do before the flight takes off and after it lands. They will cut you off. You ever heard the Dirk Bentley song, Drunk on a Plane? What Dirks doesn't mention in the song is that getting drunk on a plane is actually illegal. If you drink too much, your flight attendant will cut you off. If you get drunk on a plane, you can get up to two years in prison. Because of the changes in cabin pressure on a plane, alcohol has a much stronger effect when you're in the air. So you really need to go easy if you're planning on drinking at all on a plane. Don't order Diet Coke Flight attendants hate it when passengers order a Diet Coke on a flight. Diet Coke is fizzier than any other carbonated beverage, and that means that flight attendants have to be very careful when pouring it. It takes three times longer to pour a Diet Coke than other drinks because they have to make sure that it doesn't overflow. If you really want a zero-calorie drink, get water. Your flight attendant will appreciate it. The lights go out. When a plane takes off and right before it lands, the lights are turned off. There's a good reason for this. These are the two most critical stages of the flight. When the flight attendants turn off the lights, it gives your eyes a chance to get used to the darkness. If something were to happen during takeoff or landing, turning off the lights makes it possible for you to see. Don't order coffee. If you want a drink on a flight, your flight attendant won't suggest ordering coffee. The tanks that hold the water for hot beverages, they don't get cleaned as often as they should. Also, the valve for the bathroom water is close to the valve for the clean water, so you don't know what you're going to get. If the flight attendant offers you a drink, stick to bottled water or canned beverages. The meals are questionable. Meals are often available on long flights, but they're not like a meal you'd order at a restaurant. In-flight meals are loaded with simple carbs, sugar, salt, and fat. These meals have practically zero nutritional value and they don't really even taste as good as you might think. If you're going to be taking a long flight, you might consider bringing your own food. The job isn't as great as it sounds. Most people think the life of a flight attendant is glamorous. They get to visit new places all the time. They fly for free. The reality is that when the plane is in the air, the flight attendants are just glorified waiters and waitresses. The job is also very demanding. Flight attendants get 4 a.m. wake-up calls, they're always jet-lagged, and they have to work on weekends and holidays. As if all of that wasn't bad enough, the job keeps you from your family and friends for long periods of time. If you have a fear of flying, avoid first class. Most people think that first class seats are the best ones on the plane. In the event of a plane crash, the people in first class they have the highest risk of dying. The safest seats are those near the safety exits and the aisle seats. If you're worried about a plane crash, sitting in first class is not your best bet. The oxygen masks have a time limit. Above each seat is an oxygen mask. If the cabin pressure falls below a certain level and it becomes difficult to breathe, the oxygen masks will drop automatically. The oxygen supply in each mask is not unlimited, though. You have between 12 to 15 minutes of oxygen before it runs out. That might not seem like a lot of time, but it really is. As soon as the cabin pressure drops, the pilot is working on getting the plane to an altitude where the pressure stabilizes and you won't need the mask anymore. If you do need the mask, stay calm and breathe slowly so that you'll get the most out of the oxygen that is available to you. Flight attendants have to look the part. Years ago, flight attendants had to be pretty, have nice bodies, and look the part. Those days are gone, but airlines still do have some physical standards that a flight attendant has to meet. First, their hair has to be a natural color. Also, it must be pulled back at all times if it's long. A flight attendant cannot be so tall that their head will hit overhead bins. They also cannot be so short that their height makes it impossible for them to do their job. Getting a job as a flight attendant isn't as easy as you think. 
In 2010, Harvard University had a higher acceptance rate than Delta Airlines did. If you want to become a flight attendant, you should understand the competition is intense. In 2010, Delta announced it had 1,000 job openings. It received over 100,000 applicants. Only 4% of those who applied even got an interview. Judging by the pay and the work conditions, it's actually shocking so many people applied. Obviously, they didn't hear our list before applying. The starting pay is around $18,000 a year, and you have to have excellent customer service skills despite how difficult a passenger is. If you're bilingual, you do have a better shot of landing the job. You can get an upgrade. If there is a seat in first class available, the flight attendant can offer it to coach passengers. If you want an upgrade, be kind to the flight attendants, saying please, thank you, even smiling can help. Don't expect it to happen, but if you are friendly, you'll at least have a slim chance. The plane won't crash if you don't turn off your phone. During takeoff, your flight attendants will tell you to turn off your cell phone. If you don't, contrary to popular belief, it's not going to crash the plane. There's a reason that they tell you to turn off your phone. Cell signals are strong enough to interfere with air traffic control frequencies, which can be very dangerous when the plane is trying to take off and land. Also, they don't want you to have your cell phone on because they want your full attention. Passengers are not told about bomb threats. If you're flying over the ocean and there is a report that there is a bomb on board, you're not going to be told. It's essential that the passengers remain calm at all times, and letting everybody know about a bomb threat is not going to help keep order. Did any of these facts surprise you? Tell us in the comments which ones, and subscribe for more.